Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing my eyeshadow palette declutter. I've been putting this off for so long, I feel like I'm going to fail at it big time. I'm also a collector of Urban Decay palettes and I'm not even sure if I'm going to be getting rid of any, but we'll see. Anyway, I'm filming in our living room at the moment because my nephew is staying over in my makeup room and it's just complete chaos in there so there's no room to film. So I just thought I'd bring all my palettes down to the living room and um, yeah, I could kind of declutter them here. Right, so this is a general overview of my palettes. There's just a few out of frame at the back there as well. As you can see, I've accumulated quite a few palettes over the years, so I feel like it is time to declutter my collection and pass them on to someone else who might get some use out of them. Let's just uh, get straight into this. Starting with this palette here, this is the Maya Mia palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is one of my favourite palettes of all time. It was a limited edition palette, but I do believe you can still get these shadows individually. So I'm definitely keeping hold of this. So next up I have this Eye and Cheek palette in Dancing Till Dusk, and this is from Sleek. And I did do a video on this and I really really liked these shadows but to be honest they're not really anything unique and I do have these shadows in other palettes that I like more so I'm going to be passing this one on. Next up I have my Urban Decay Naked Basics palette, this is just the, um, the first one. I'm definitely keeping hold of this, not just because it's Urban Decay, this is a really great palette to travel with and because I do like to wear bright colours quite a bit of the time as well, usually they don't have any neutral transitioning shades, so this is a great palette for that kind of thing too. Next up is this Barry M Natural Shadow and Glow palette. This palette isn't really anything special, I did do a review on it quite a while back. These shadows are not bad at all, but these shadows aren't the best here, and this blush does not show up whatsoever, it has no pigmentation. I am going to pass this one on, I do think my mum would get quite a lot of use out of it because she prefers a wash of colour, and I prefer, well, mostly prefer more pigmented shadows, so I think she'll prefer that to me, so I'll pass that to her. Next up I have the, another sleep palette here, this is the Ultra Matte Volume 1. It's full of really fun, super bright colours, but to be honest, again, I don't really ever reach for it, and I feel like I know someone that's going to get a lot of use out of this, so I'm going to pass that on to them. Next I have this Too Faced Cat Eyes palette. I love these mini palettes from Too Faced, so I'm definitely going to be keeping hold of this one. I'm pretty sure this was limited edition, so I don't think it's available anymore, although I could be wrong. But I do really love this palette, I love these kinds of colours, I think it's really pretty. I haven't got as much use out of it as I would like, so I think I'm going to keep that, and I'm going to put it somewhere that so that I can make sure to get some use out of it because it's a really nice palette. This here is a Zoeva Rose Golden palette. This is pretty new to me. I think Sam's parents got it for me for my birthday. I've only managed to play around with it a couple of times because I've been quite ill recently. So I haven't really felt well enough to play around with uh, some of the new makeup palettes that I have. I do like it. I'm yet to test out the longevity and everything, but I really like the formula. They're really nice and soft and buttery. So these shimmer shades are really gorgeous as well. So I'm going to keep hold of this one. So let's get the Naked palettes out the way. This is the Naked one. This is the Warmer Tone palette. I love this. I'm going to be keeping hold of this. Same with the Naked 2. This is a more cool toned palette and I love playing around with this palette. I know this is not everybody's favourite but I do really like this. I then have the Naked 3 palette. Again, I really like this. Not everybody loves the rose goldy pink tones but I think they're really pretty so I'm going to be keeping hold of that one. Great thing about these Urban Decay palettes as well is that they are permanent, so I can use them in my videos at any time, really. This is the newest Urban Decay palette. This is the Naked Heat. And, of course, this is really new to me. I've been playing it around with it quite a bit, though. For the most part, I do like it. I do have a review coming up on this palette, but it's just a really nice, warm-toned, orangey, reddish-brown palette. I really like it so far. But, yeah, obviously keeping this one because it's super new to me. I have another Barry M palette. This is the Smoking Hot Shadow and Blush palette. And, again, this was okay. Like, the pigmentation wasn't too bad. But I'm just not really a fan of the formula. This blush is uh, slightly better. It's definitely got a lot more pigmentation if you can see there whereas the blush in the natural palette just doesn't show up at all but again i'm gonna pass this one on sticking with barry m this is the eye shine shadow and glaze palette i did use this palette in a couple of makeup videos and i really liked how the looks came out i really think that barry m do the shimmers much better than the matte shades this glaze is pretty useless i think what i'm gonna do is try and depot that glaze and then i'm just gonna pass this on not because it's a really bad palette because i actually think these shadows perform really well but I just have these kind of colours in other palettes and I don't get much use out of it. This here is another palette that is very new to me. This is the Alchemist palette by Kat Von D. This can be used as a face and eye palette, which is why I've included it. So it's a really cool holographic palette. And I, again, I've played with it a few times, but I haven't really try like fully tested it out and I really want to. These swatch really really pretty, um, really nice holographic shades and they apply really nicely over darker shadows as well if you really want to change a darker shadow up but 
I still need more time to play with this. I do like it anyway, so I suspect I'd keep it anyway. The only thing is, and I know many YouTubers have said this as well, is that these are tiny, like I thought they were gonna be much, much bigger. Especially as you can use them for the face and the eyes. They look more like the size of an eyeshadow rather than a face product. And of course the packaging is really, really cool. I'm not sure if you can see that because I have a bright light shining in my face, but it's just a really cool holographic packaging. Another palette that is new to me, and I still wanna do a video on it, even though everyone and their mother has filmed a video on it, is the Sweet Peach palette by Too Faced. This palette is su was such a drama for me to get. To be honest, I gave up on it and I actually received this for my birthday from Sam. So thank you, Sam. And again, this is another palette I've played around with a couple of times. I did really like how it turned out. Um, I didn't think I would like this palette actually as much as I do. There's a spoiler alert. But yeah, I'm gonna do a proper video on this. And also my mum got me the cheek palette as well. So I'll include that in the review as well. And I'll probably do a couple of looks with this as well. So obviously keeping this one. I have another sleep palette here. This is the Storm palette and I'm gonna be passing this on. I do like the sleep palette, so I'm probably gonna pass all of them on though to be honest because they just sit in my drawer and I feel like they never get used but they are good palettes. I definitely recommend them over the Barry M palettes. I think they're a couple of pounds more expensive but better quality. This palette is so hard to open though. I do think this is really really pretty but to be honest I just don't really use it and I feel like someone else could get much better use out of it rather than it just sitting in my drawer expiring. So I'm gonna pass that on. I have the Urban Decay Moondust palette. This is another palette that is new to me. I think Sam's parents got this for me for Christmas. I'm on quite a tight budget as far as makeup is concerned. In the clutters you'll see a lot of po uh, products that I've accumulated over the years. I also get scent products and my birthday and Christmas are really near each other so I tend to ask for a lot of uh, makeup products for my birthday and Christmas so I can kind of stock up for the year and then I'll just try and save towards getting the really limited edition products throughout the year. So the Moondust palette is one of the palettes that I got for a present along with all of my naked palettes are all presents as well except for the naked heat. I love this, I've played around quite a bit with this because I can't stay away from it. It definitely works better wet or if you use your finger than if you just go in with a brush. If you go in with a brush you're just gonna get more of the glitter particles. If you want that full on intense colour that you see in the palette definitely apply these wet with a flat stiff brush or um, or just use your finger as well but these are awesome I love the moon dust shadows so definitely keeping this and the packaging is awesome this is not going to be a surprise to you because I said this in the beginning but Urban Decay are pretty much my favorite makeup company next up I have this Smashbox full exposure palette I am going to be passing this on I think my mum wants this so with the full exposure I, there have been very mixed reviews on this palette some people really really love it and others just can't get on with it at all and I'm unfortunately the latter these matte shades are beautiful I really love them but the shimmer, sh shimmer shades, I've applied them wet, how everyone tells you that you're supposed to apply them. I've applied them all sorts of ways and I just can't get them to work. It's more just like a wash of colour, which I don't mind sometimes. Like I, I understand that not all eyeshadow palettes should be pigmented and sometimes I think we can forget that and we expect everything to be super pigmented all the time. But um, sometimes a wash of colour can be really nice, but I think I was looking for something different with this palette and I didn't really get it. So. I know my mum will get a lot of use out of this, so I'm gonna be passing that one on to her. Next up, we have this Urban Decay palette, and I can't remember what this one's called, but I just think the packaging is really awesome. It doesn't really say anywhere what it's called, but yeah. This is another palette that I like to um, take with me when I travel. I've got a couple of dents in these two shadows here. I feel like with the Urban Decay formula, like I'm very light-handed with my shadows, so sometimes it looks like I don't really use them a lot, when in fact I do use them quite a bit. It's just that I'm really light-handed, and also I find Urban Decay shadows, for the most part, to be really pigmented. This palette is a palette that I do want to finish up. Um, I'm gonna give myself a year from now to do so, because I do have some of these shades in other palettes, but this is just a really convenient one to take traveling with me. And also I like to keep this on my desk as well and I can just reach for it. And this is um, a great example of when the Naked Basics palette comes in handy as well, because you've got all of these shimmers and no mattes. And that's very much been the Urban Decay way, is to have all shimmer shadows and no mattes whatsoever up until Basically when the Naked palettes came out, I guess they started including mattes and then the Vice palettes as well. But if you guys remember the Book of Shadows, which I have some upstairs, I just haven't included them in this C clutter because they're pretty much more for show now. They're kind of retired, but I keep hold of them as decoration. Um, all of the Book of Shadows were shimmer as well. So yeah, long story short, keeping that one. I've got a couple of these Smashbox quads. I think they're quads or are they quints? I don't know. Little palettes anyway. These were limited edition. These were on sale in Boots for like four pounds, I think, a year or so ago. And they're really cool designs, snake design, but to be honest with you guys, I've like never really used them. So I think, once again, nothing against Smashbox. I actually like the formula of uh, these shadows here, but 
I'm never going to use them, so someone else can get use out of those ones. This is a Delmar palette from Sleek, and these are really pretty colours, but I just don't reach for this at all. So I'm going to pass this one on. Sorry, Sleek. If you guys are wondering what I'm going to do with the palettes that I'm getting rid of, I'm going to be just disinfecting them and donating them to friends and family alike. So, what's this? This is the Kat Von D. Is this the Chrysalis? Yeah, this is the Chrysalis palette by Kat Von D. Can we just talk about the packaging? It's just incredible. Like, I know that you shouldn't just go for palettes or whatever just based on the packaging, yet yeah, the product has to be good too, but the Kat Von D and some of the Urban Decay packaging is just insane. I feel like I could never get rid of it. This palette is really, really nice. I do feel like the purples could have been better, and this darker blue was a bit of a letdown as well. But other than that, it's really nice, and it is pretty new to me. I did a review on this just before Christmas, so definitely keeping hold of that. But Kat Von D is also very new to the UK as well, it launched just last year. Sticking with Kat Von D, this is the Metal Matte Palette, this is the limited edition palette from Christmas. Again, I'm going to be keeping hold of this, I love this palette, especially these crushed metal shades up here. And the mattes, I feel like the mattes are much better than the formula in the Chrysalis palette. But yeah, I love this palette, I know it's limited edition so I couldn't use it in a video, but it's gorgeous so I'm keeping it. Next up, I'm not even sure if you can see, but this is an Illamasqua palette. And... I feel like this might need throwing away to be honest, I'm not sure, but this has got cream products and powder products in it. This here is a cream, it's like a highlighty cream, and then this is called Hollow, so you could use this to contour, which I tried to. And then you've got like multitasking shadows in there, so this can be used as a shadow and an a liner. This brown is Thunder, which is like an eyebrow powder from Urban, um, from uh, Illamasqua. This was a Christmas palette from a year or two ago, I think. But I really don't like it when companies put creams and shadows together and there's nothing to separate them off because the thing is is that the shadows ruin the creams, I feel like the creams dry out really quickly and it just becomes a bit of a mess. I also just don't reach for this palette, it was okay, like this kind of uh, reddish brick colour is pretty nice and this blush was really nice but nothing really blew me away about it so I'm just going to get rid of that one, sorry La Masca. Right, I'm just going to get my Urban Decay Vice palettes out of the way because I know I'm keeping them. But yeah, this is the Vice 2 and I've used this a ton. I love this palette. I always, I still reach for it a lot now. And uh, yeah, keeping that one. I mean, I'm keeping all of the Vice palettes, but I'll just really quickly take you through them. This is the Vice 3. This palette's awesome. I love this row of shades in case you couldn't tell. Like I've got a big dent in this red shade here. I've got a bit of a dent in these two shades here. I love this and I love the layout as well. I feel like, well I personally feel like it's really user friendly. Um, whereas some of the Ebony K Vice palettes, you feel like the shade range, well some people feel like the shade range doesn't make sense where I felt, I, I personally feel like they did a good job with this. This is another one of those palettes where people thought the shade range was all over the place, which I didn't think it was that bad. I mean, they've still got the greens together, kind of the orange row together, this deeper, this purpley pink row together. Uh, so I didn't think it was too bad at all. But also, I'm one of those people that like likes a bit of a challenge when I open up my eyeshadow palette. So I like to kind of push myself to use colors that I wouldn't normally put together. But I know like not everyone's into that kind of thing. So I can understand why people don't find it to be totally user friendly. But yeah, I love this palette once again. So keeping that. This is the Vice Limited Reloaded. I mainly got this palette for the older shades, like uh, it took ages for this palette to come out here in the UK and I was getting kind of jealous of everyone in the US for having it, but there are shadows like Twice Baked, Oil Slick, um, Midnight Cowboy, loads of shadows that I have in my old book of shadows that I wouldn't even put near my eyes today because they're that old, but I just can't let go of them. So I was, and also Gash, Gash is another one of my favourites, so this is like a real nostalgic palette to me and uh, yeah. Can you guys tell how passionate I am about Urban Decay, it's terrible. It's not good, it's not healthy, but yeah. What should we go on to now? Oh, here's a Smashbox palette that I'm actually keeping. This was sent to me. How cool is that packaging? This is the Covershot Smoky Eye palette. And these came out quite recently. You can get a bunch of palettes in this collection, like warms, neutrals, as a colourful palette as well. But this is a smoked one that was sent to me. And I love it. I love the formula of these shadows. I feel like they're completely different to the one, the formula in the full exposure. How beautiful that red shade is, it's gorgeous. And then you've got this really beautiful green shade here, it's just gorgeous, like I, I'm definitely keeping hold of this one. So here is the Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette. I got this at Christmas. I have very mixed feelings on this palette. If I were going to get rid of an Urban Decay palette, I feel like this would be the one I would get rid of futuristically. I'm still playing around with it and I have made it work for me quite recently, but there are some shades in here that are real 
studs. Like for example here, you've got gold mine. Actually, let me swatch this and I'll show you what I mean. This is gold mine from the Full Spectrum palette and this is gold mine from the Vice Reloaded. And I swear to you, they're almost like different colors, like the pigmentation is crazy. So that's a swatch from the Vice Reloaded and this is a swatch from the Full Spectrum. Can we see the difference? Like look how crazy pigmented that is. And then this one is just really patchy. There's hardly any color payoff. I don't know what happened with this. I am having fun with some of these brighter shades and whatever. I know I've got the electric palette, which I'm gonna keep as well. But I think if I don't get as much use out of this, then I'll probably pass it on in my next declutter. But super disappointing, because I was really looking forward to that. They have, I feel like in a world where we're oversaturated with neutral palettes, especially neutral warm tones, and don't get me wrong, I like my neutral warm tones, it's really nice to see a brand kind of, especially a brand like Urban Decay, who are all about kind of stepping outside the box. They're all about colour and edginess. I get really excited when these kind of palettes come along. I'm just slightly disappointed by some of the shadows in there. This palette, on the other hand, this is the Spectrum palette. The only thing that I'm not overly keen about this. What I have a love-hate relationship is uh, I feel like this little tray, because this is the lid, it can be used as a like a little mirrored makeup tray, which I think is really cool. And the only thing about it is I feel like it's not very travel friendly. I'd have to put an elastic band around it or something. These are all jewel tones and they are stunning. They're really beautiful. I love Omen. It reminds me of a shade in the Vice 2, I think, which is very similar to this. But I really, really love all of these shadows, so this is not going anywhere. This is the Alice in Wonderland palette, and a bunch of people really hated this. Um, I have the original Alice in Wonderland. This is Alice through the looking glass. Firstly, like, the packaging is incredible. Here are the shadows. I did a whole bunch of looks using every single shadow in this palette. I really liked this. I didn't find that the pigmentation was that bad whatsoever. I think the two shadows that let me down the most, this shadow called Dream On, is a bit of a joke, even when wet, that just nothing applies. And Metamorphosis, which ironically, actually, one second, I feel like this is turning into a comparison video. We have Metamorphosis in the Full Spectrum palette. Let me just swatch these. So here's Metamorphosis in the Full Spectrum. Really cool periwinkle blue, just what I was looking for. And this is Metamorphosis from the Alice Through the Looking Glass. And I don't know if you guys can tell there, but it's slightly paler and patchier. So, funnily enough, whereas Goldmine was a dud in this palette, Metamorphosis is su a much better shadow. Whereas there's Metamorphosis in Through the Looking Glass palette, it was okay, it just kind of applied patchy, and you didn't really get the colour payoff that you wanted, so. But I'm definitely keeping this. This is something that I'll probably never get rid of. One, because I'm a massive collector of Urban Decay palettes. Because this is the same packaging as the old Book of Shadows palettes, if you guys remember those. Once I feel like these shadows are no longer safe to use on my eyes, I'll definitely keep using these as decoration. But next up, I have two Too Faced palettes. And I'm having a really hard time with these because I feel like I don't really use them, but I haven't got, like, I haven't got any of the newer holiday palettes because I felt like with Too Faced they all started to look the same. This is the Everything Nice palette. So you get um, two blushes, you get the Chocolate Soleil bronzer, which I find, I couldn't use it, but I find it's a bit too dark for me. Really, I prefer the Milk Chocolate. And this is an Inner Light highlighter, which is a little bit chunky. It's not that great, and I find it to be slightly too dark on my skin. I don't mind this palette at all. I mainly, again, keep these for decorations because if you put them up, they look like little books. This colour girly is incredible. I think this is the one everyone says is like Max Club. The thing is, I do really like it for decoration, but I don't really use it. So I think I'm going to pass this one on. I can't believe I'm saying that. This one here is a few of my fa the I, a few of my favorite things palette. I might hold on to this one because I've definitely gotten more use out of this. I know this one is slightly older than the other. But it's kind of a similar deal. You get two bronzers, you've got Chocolate Soleil and Sun Bunny. I actually like both of these blushes and I like most of the shadows as well. So I think I'm gonna keep this one and get rid of the other one, which I'm really happy about because before this video, I wasn't gonna get rid of either. This next sleep palette, I think this is the only one that I'm going to keep and this is from the Whimsical Wonderland collection. This is full of some really nice pastel shades. I did a review on this palette as well. And if you place these over NYX Jumbo Pencil and Milk, I feel like they perform quite well. So I'm gonna keep hold of this one for now and if I don't get much use out of it, it might not make my next declutter. Next up I have the Too Faced Peanut Butter and Jelly Palette. I love this palette, definitely keeping. Same with these Chocolate Bar palettes. I have 
the original chocolate bar palette. I've got it in the bulkier pack packaging because mine's a little bit older. This is the chocolate bonbon. I know some people don't like the way they think, feel like it looks childish or whatever, but that kind of doesn't bother me. I think it looks quite cute, so I'm going to keep that one. This next one I'm going to be keeping hold of forever. I like stayed up all night to get this because I ordered it from America from the Sugar Pill website. This is the Edward Scissorhands anniversary palette. This is what the inside looks like. I could probably use this palette in videos because I believe that all of these shades are available individually. I do have a little bit of trouble with Home Sweet Home. I feel like it just doesn't last that long and it fades quite quickly on me. But I'm going to play around with it and see if I can make it work. I'd actually be interested to get the individual shadows as well and see how they swatch against the shadows in this palette. But this is an incredible palette, it's not going anywhere. Like, Edith is a Hands is one of my favourite films of all time. Tim Burton is one of my favourite directors of all time, so definitely keeping this. This is my Makeup Forever palette. I actually just used this yesterday and um, I got this when I went to Disneyland in Paris. I went to the Makeup Forever in Sephora. It was a really scary experience. I'm one of those people that hates it when like shop assistants come up and ask if I need help and then I know they're only doing their job. I've been a shop assistant but I also have like high level anxiety and it just it really stresses me out. I managed to get this palette, I do play around with it quite a bit. You only need the tiniest amount of these, like these are super super pigmented shadows, I really like the Makeup Forever shadows. They almost feel like quite creamy, just talk about that blue shade, it's just gorgeous. But yeah, I'm definitely keeping hold of this one. This next one here is the Urban Decay Naked Ultimate Basics. Like you feel like they couldn't add any more naked palettes to their line but somehow they manage it. This again is just a palette of all matte shadows. As you can see I've barely touched this, my mum got this for me for Christmas and I do really need to play around with it. So far I've used Extra Bitter um, a few times and I really really like it and I think I've used a couple of these, uh, yeah I've used, what's this one, Magnet and Lethal as well. So far I swatched it and I do like the formula. This next palette I think I will declutter this next time because I know someone that would really love this but I need to get an individual taco. Like I could depot this but I want to give it to the person like fully intact if you know what I mean. So I need to get an individual of this shadow here uh, called taco because it is one of the best white shadows that I've ever used. It's super pigmented, it really helps if you need to blend a shadow out that's being a bit difficult. You just take a tiniest bit of this and apply it around the edges and it just really helps. I think it's the best white eyeshadow that I own. So yeah, I'm keeping hold of this but only for the white shadow. Not that these three shadows are bad, I think these shadows are great, like the sugar pill shadows are really really good, but I've got these in my electric palette so I don't really need those, but I'm going to keep it for now. Right, last but not least, this is the Urban Decay electric palette and can we just talk about, talk about how well loved this palette is. I get so much use out of this, I'm a massive colour junkie so this palette is right up my street. They're basically pressed pigments so what you see in the palette is what you're going to get. Um, the blue ones can be a bit of a pain in the ass to kind of build up. But they're not terrible, you just have to be careful when blending because they can blend away. You're definitely better off patting the shadows on and just very, very lightly, like really lightly blending the edges. Every shadow in here that you see is going to look like that on the eyes. And that's what I love about this palette. It's just super, super pigmented, really creamy and really easy to blend. I'm really sad if they are discontinuing this. I'm almost thinking about asking for another one for Christmas, like a backup. Although because you just need the tiniest amount, um, this is going to take me forever to get through, but I don't know, I don't know. So these are all the palettes that I'm getting rid of. In my head, I wanted to get rid of at least 10 palettes. That probably doesn't sound like a lot, but I really thought this was going to be a massive fail. I kind of thought at the beginning of this video, I don't really use sleep palettes, which is why I've gotten rid of all of them bar one. And um, I didn't think I'd get rid of this Too Faced palette at all. So I'm kind of really proud of myself that I'm going to be passing this on to a better home. I know someone that's going to love that. Same with Smashbox Full Exposure, like my mom's gonna love that. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. I know like to most people this might be a fail, but I'm really, really happy about it because I have a real problem when it comes to lipsticks and, and eyeshadow palettes. Like I have a real problem letting go. Everything else in my life, when it comes to decluttering, I'm ruthless. Like I don't really hold sentimental, sentimental value to anything. And I can be quite cutthroat, but for some reason with makeup, it holds like a an unnecessarily special place in my heart and uh, yeah, it can be quite hard to let go of. Anyway guys, I hope you found this video helpful in some ways and maybe you enjoyed seeing some of the palettes that I love and some of the palettes that didn't quite work for me. It's actually quite helpful for me to video my declutters because I feel like it does egg me on to declutter more than I would. 
So yeah, I'm gonna stop rambling on now. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. I've got a decluttering playlist, so I will link that down below if you wanna go and watch the rest of my declutter videos. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.